All right, shalom. Let's see. This is um, Ross Alonso Tafara reporting for the Land of Judah Society. The date today is, um, it appears to be Tuesday, July 26, 2016. It's 2.35 a.m. All right. We're going to try to bring forth as much as we possibly can um, in hopes that this reached the Lion of Judah Society in particular and um, its information the which we see uh, fit for our benefit and purpose. Excuse us, something's going wrong. Oh well, there's some stuff playing in the background. We usually leave the TV on Roku, YouTube, and and um, allow it to play teachings. I don't know what's on right now. Let's hope it's not too bad. So now, all right, let's see. You know, I guess uh, what we could do to to make this relative to to anything um in particular. Uh, what we could say is we could pretend that this teaching is actually, in fact, um, uh, being brought forth relative to, you know, to Ainai Rastafari Shabbat study number 40. Being that, you know, that's kind of like the closest thing we could um, relate this to. Um, to give it, you know, some practical and, and meaningful reason to be brought forth. That's to say... Um, this it's close to today's date although the shabbat study already passed um this is this was um for the shabbat study was um pertaining to july 22 to the 23rd 2016 which is entitled balak so now uh, why do we say this well because let's see here the book of um the book of bamitabar that's to say orit zehulkba the book of Numbers, uh, chapter 22, verse 2, initiates um, the, the part of study or the Torah portion or the Torah parashat that is required for this Shabbat study, um, the, what, the, the which one we have mentioned, um, titled Balak, and um, that's not necessarily... Uh, an indication of a reference what we're trying to make known is that um within this portion of Torah we find something that we could attribute to to the reason we bring forth this study that that we're about to bring forth and forgive we we didn't actually plan this we're trying to find exactly um, where it is chapter 24 how could I have forgotten chapter 24 specifically um, Balam, Bilam, the prophecy from Peor, the Messianic kingdom. We're really not going to uh, read through the whole thing, just to make the connection or set a basis for this study. So let us begin with, this is on Book of Numbers, chapter 24, verse 21. And he looked on the Kenites. Wow, this changes things. Uh, oh boy. And he looked on the Kenites and took up his parable and said, Strong is thy dwelling place, and thou puttest thy nest in a rock. Nevertheless, the Kenite shall be wasted, until Ashur shall carry thee away captive. And he took up his pair of... Okay, that's that's fine. Um, that's enough. Kenites. Alright, this kind of changes everything. I'm not too sure if, if it even relates, although I have mentioned it in the past that it has to do with it. But I'm not too sure anymore. Watch, let's go to chapter 12 of the book of Genesis. Or perhaps chapter 15. Chapter 15 of the book of Genesis. Um, towards the end. Uh, let's begin with um, verse 18. Actually, and it came to pass that when the sun went down. This is verse 17. That when the sun went down. And it was dark, behold, a smoking furnace, and a burning lamp 
that passed between those pieces. It's interesting because we were just thinking about um, a son of Beor, Petor. Now, who's that? That's Bilam, Balam, son of uh, Beor, of Petor. Now, Beor, it seems that, I mean, just from, I'm not saying this is the, the exact definition, but um, it would seem like Beor, of the light. And actually, like, if you check the Hebrew concordance, it does say something to the effect like a lamp. So, and a burning lamp that passed between those pieces. And this is actually uh, right after the, the declaration of 400 years plus. In which, um, thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs and shall serve them and they shall afflict them 400 years. Now, uh, jumping over to verse 17 burning lamp that passed between those pieces verse 18 in the same day the lord made a covenant with with abram saying to thy seed have i given this land from the river egypt the great river to the great river the river euphrates so that's from the nile to to the great river euphrates verse 19 the kenites and the kenesites and the Kadam Cat moon nights. Well, this really changes things because I was about to to um suppose that the Kenites were were somehow the Kenizzites. This is interesting. Well, you know that changes things. Um, I was about to say that uh that this whole he looked on the Ken on the Kenites and took up his parable and said, "Strong is thy dwelling place, and thou puttest thy nest in a rock." Nevertheless, the Kenite shall be wasted until Ashur shall carry thee away captive. And he took up his parable and said, Alas, who shall live when God doeth this? And ships shall come from the coast of Sittim. You know, um, ships. And we will be brought to Egypt from the same way that we already know. Now, once would say, like, how, when have we ever been to Egypt? Well, how did we get to Egypt? Because we betrayed our brother. Because we refused to accept him that was chosen. But he was chosen to be separate from his youth. From, from his beginning. We're talking about Yosef. The one that is but is not. For he's not even considered among his brethren. So this is like the suffering Mashiach Ben Yosef. Um, actually his descendants are in turn um, allotted to, to Yaakov. To fulfill that 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 promise to Jacob that he would be, um, you know, he would be, I forgot exactly, like, the what fulfillment of what promise with exactitude it's referring to, but it could be that, um, that he would have possession over, over, um, many nations as, or multiplying thee, I will multiply, or who blessed thee will bless others. I mean, I, I really don't remember exactly what, what fulfillment? Well, it's this one. Watch. I think it's um, the book of Genesis, chapter 48. And as for me, when I came from Paran, from Padan, Rachel died by me in the land of Canaan, in the way, when yet there was but a little way to come to Ephrata. It's like almost there. And I buried her there in the way of Ephrata, the same as Bethlehem, Bethlehem. So what is this setting up? This is setting up the fact that that uh, the woman died in the giving birth. And thus, um, you know, obviously, the travailing, well, in, in this case, not travailing, I mean, Rachel died. But um, it's setting up for, for, for a suffering experience. You know, I mean, I'm not sure what to make of that. But I'm sure it's related to Christ's experience. Or actually the mistake of, of the Magi, which this connects it in turn to, to Ethiopia, because it was the, the Ethiopians that were present and bowed before him. See, we won't know this unless we read the Metafik Edus, which is the book of the seven seals, at least in the in the material sense. Um, but we, we as individuals, if we receive the line of the tribe of Judah, who is the root of David, who hath prevailed to open the book and to look therein, 
and lose the seven seals, then actually, um, see, at that point, he's he's upon the throne. And in the midst of the throne is the lamb as if slain. That is that that is to say that Christ, yes, is, which is not the lion, yes, is Christos. Um, you know, if we refer to the book of the prophet Isaiah, chapter 53, you know, as a sheep led to the slaughter, he opened not his mouth. And so, Jesus Christos fulfills that aspect, the suffering aspect. And so, he cannot be the lion. He's the lamb, as if slain. And he is in the midst of the throne. He is in the heart of him sitting upon the throne. Now, the lion of the tribe of Judah, root of David, who hath prevailed. He, in turn, is a lamb led to the slaughter. But he opened up his mouth. Now, in this case, it would it could be said that Ethiopia was led like a lamb to the slaughter, like a sheep led to the slaughter. Now, no doubt, um, sacrificed to the enemies in hopes of appeasement, in this false philosophy of appeasement. But you cannot appease that which is um, eternally covetousness. So, covetousness. So, um, basically, you know, like, um, he did open up his mouth, and it, the hour struck for the poor people to declare a just cause. So it's a little bit different, although both experience the same authority is granted to one or the other in a in in a you know in an emphasized um, sense according to their calling, Father and Son being one, yes, one experience, but then still there's different aspects to be fulfilled. For example, Ben Ben Ha Yosef, Ben Ha Dawit, you know, Mashiach Ben Ha Yosef and Mashiach Ben Ha Dawit, the Mashiach. Uh, son of David and son of Joseph, uh, two different characters. Now, so basically, what? Why we say all that? Because Bethlehem and oh, because of the Magi. The Magi were present there. The Magi are um, are present at the at the feet of Jesus Christus, a child. And like I said, we wouldn't know this unless we read whether the Amharic um, Rastafari official emperor's Bible. Or even the Spanish, because the Spanish says it very clear. Y los etíopes se prostrarán, postrarán delante de él, y sus enemigos lamerán la tierra. That's to say, and the Ethiopians shall prostrate before him, and his enemies shall lick the dust. Now the King James Version says, uh, and they that dwell in the wilderness shall bow before him, and the enemy shall lick the dust. This is, uh, this is um, a reference to the Psalm 72, uh, verse 9. So... Later on, I think not the next verse, but the, the 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 verse after that one, it says something to the effect, and and the kings of of Seba and Sheba shall bring forth presents. This is this is referencing, alluding to the fact that the Arabians, which are Ethiopians, they were present before um before the child and gave gave the, the the gift that they gave. Now, with the exception of the gold, which could be contended in the sense that you could find gold in other places, but this is a particular gold which you can find only whether it be across the, the Red Sea, um, I mean the Horn of Africa, onto the other part of Africa named Arabia, or um, or in the Ethiopian, modern Ethiopian sense of Arabia. And as a matter of fact, that's, that's confusion in itself because Arabia, Araba, Araba, Arabia, actually means uh, the going down of the sun. It actually means the west. So it's pretty interesting how they would say that that Yemen, you know, being even, um, it depends how you're looking at it. I mean, if we're looking at it from, from a, uh, on a map, then it's the sun on my right hand, Yemen. You know, but if you're looking from the map upwards to someone looking at the map, then it would be their left hand. But sun on my right hand, Yemen. Yemen and Ethiopia, the Horn of Africa, both horns connecting. Even that's pretty interesting. But Arab, Araba, or Arab, is is actually it means it means like um west going the going down of the sun. So it's interesting how they would say that Arabia is actually on the on the east of um of Africa when in fact um the the, the name Ar Arab is is um or araba is is completely um opposite to that to that um idea and so we say this in the context that well it's it's still africa but most importantly it was ethiopia at that time at least um uh, uh, truthfully if if you want to base your your um conclusions on documented facts well still even then we could conclude that 
So the representatives of Sheba and Seba were Ethiopian subjects. And we could even go as far as saying that that um that one of the the individuals, Ethiopians that were that prostrated before Jesus Christos the child it is it was actually the king of Ethiopia at that time, the Negus. And his name, as a matter of fact, was Balt I think watch, I don't remember the name exactly, but this is where we're gonna where we're gonna like um uh receive that real quick without a doubt. N let's see the book of Daniel. What did they call Daniel? What was Daniel's name? Daniel's name, Daniel's name. Let's see. Uh, I haven't studied this in a while, even, or even read it, but um, there's a there's a name given to Daniel. Let's see. We we probably shouldn't. Have, this has nothing to do with what we were going to bring forth, but um, let's see. Daniel, the name of Belt Belteshazzar. Actually, it says here in the footnote, um, the king's leader. Or attendant identical with the meaning with Belshazzar so this is Daniel's name and in, in in the book of Daniel I mean not his Hebrew name but the name that's been given to him so this is verse 7 the first chapter of the book of the prophet Daniel into whom the prince of the eunuchs gave names for he gave to Daniel the name of Belshazzar Belshazzar this is so interesting because the king actually that was present before Jesus Christos the child and bowed before him, prostrated himself before him. His name is it was the Negus Belteshazzar, Belteshazzar, Belteshazzar. Um, we we could bring forth the evidence, but we have we're not going to. It, it, we we had an agenda. We have the book right there. It's called African Focus. Um, you know, we'll bring it forth some other time. But what we're noticing right now is the belt is Azar. 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 Belt is, you know, belt is, you know. Well, actually, no, I was going to say that belt is, but it's belt is and instead of belt is. Anyways, I was going to try to, I thought maybe that was um, linked with um, what the Arabians call um, uh, the Queen of Sheba instead of... Um, Makeda, they called her Belkis. It, it, you know, there's a possibility. Belt is Azar. You know, Belt is Azar. But what is a fact, and um, we do have the evidence, and it doesn't matter if one's received it or not, the truth doesn't stop from being any truer just because one's uh, refused to accept it. Belt Azar was the name of um, not only Daniel, but um, the Negus apostrated before uh, Jesus Christ was a child. And the reason I say um, the Negus is because he was actually the king over Ethiopia at that time. The other ones were just representatives of the colonies of Ethiopia, which are referred to as Seba and Sheba, I think. So now, having said all of that, going forward, verse 8, chapter 48 of the book of Genesis, And Israel beheld Joseph's sons and said, Who are these? And Joseph said to his father, They are my sons, and God hath given me, uh, that whom God hath given me in, in this place. And he said, Bring them, I pray thee to thee. To me and I will bless them now let's see let's see that wasn't actually what I had to bring forth but anyways actually it was it was um let's start with verse 3 and Jacob said to Joseph God Almighty appeared to me at loose in the land of Canaan and blessed me and said to me behold I will make thee fruitful and multiply thee and I will make of the a multitude of people this is the promise the which I was looking for and will give this land to thy seed after after thee for an everlasting possession, and now thy two sons, Ephraim and Manasseh, which were born to thee in the land of Egypt before I came to thee in Egypt, into Egypt, are mine as Reuben and Simon. They shall be mine. So this is, you know, they take from Joseph the lineage because it's like, it's like Jesus Christos. It's kind of like not even considered because we're, we rejected him. So this is the way that, that Yaakov gets his promise, um, uh, well, established and therefore he knows that his God is true now the ships well chapter 46 this is the beginning because we rejected 
our our Black Lord and Savior Jesus Christus, and we get we get taken up in ships. Like we know that we know this way already because the first time we rejected Joseph, and this is what happened. And Israel took his journeys with all that he'd had and came to Beersheba and offered sacrifices to the God of his father Yisachak. And the God and God spoke to Israel in the visions of the night and said, Yikob, Yikob. And he said, Here I am. And he said, I am the God. I am God, the God of thy father. Fear that fear not to go down into Egypt, for I will there make thee a great nation. And so, you know, Pharaoh sends his ships, and they're carried away once again in ships. So, that's where it is. Maybe the, the, the reference isn't directly like here, but um, let's see. And father, their little ones, and in the wagons, in this case, in the wagons which Pharaoh had sent to carry him. So yeah, you know that's that's that, and we know what's what. So going forward, I mean, you know what we were gonna say is that we pretty much thought that the the that the overcoming of the Kenites, or nevertheless the Kenites shall be wasted. Well, we're gonna forget that idea and just go forward. What we were thinking is that we were confusing the, the Kenizzites with the Kenites. And so we were about to say that the Kenizzites were actually consumed into the tribe of Judah in fullness. And this is how we rid ourselves of our enemies. Moab, Ammon, Esau, or Edom, that's us. That's us. That's our human side. It's not anyone else but us. And we have to perfect the man to bring out... To bring, we have, oh, for example, from um, from from Esau, we have to sacrifice him and become Yaakov, and then from Yaakov, we have to become Israel. It, it's a refining. It's the perfecting of a man. It's not a perfect man. It's a man becoming perfect, and this is how we smite the corners of Moab when we are well rounded, when we are perfected, when we become a prince. The star of Yaikop. And once we are a perfected man, then we can receive the rod of rulership. And then a scepter shall be shall come out of Israel. You know, we could worship stars, and that's interesting and stuff like that. But the fullness of the matter is that we are to be. This scripture has been fulfilled many times. At least twice. Why? Because uh, Jesus Christos, Yeshua HaMashiach. And then once again with his imperial majesty, Edom al But it's not, it's not it. It's not the fullness. That's the preparation of a good work. Now, you know what? Might as well go into this. It wasn't even supposed to be about this. But um, what's a star? Uh, you know, even, even, even the Magi, the Ethiopians, they were guided by the star. So it's a guide. It's a light to the Gentiles. When, when the Bible's talking about the Gentiles that would receive the light, it was not talking about anyone else but Ethiopia. It was talking about the that the Ethiopians would have received it. Not because they're Gentiles, in a sense. We're Gentiles. We're Goim. We're the we're Israel Goim. They are they are um Kush Goim, not Kush Goim, they are Ethiopian Goim. So the nations of Israel, the nations of Ethiopia, it's the same thing. They're the body, we're the soul. Now, how does that even have anything to do with this? Well, because they they received Yeshua HaMashiach, and they are no other people. They are the same people. So the kingdom would not be left to any other people. So they were they were Judaic. They were Hebrew. Hebrew Judaic, and then they picked up their cross and followed Christ. So now they're Ju they they were Judaic Hebrew Christian. So this is the Gentiles. This is the Gentile. When when you know the light shining in darkness, well, it's shining in in um in Kush, you know. So in a hidden work, but it has nothing to do with the Western civilization or any or Rome or anything like that. It's got nothing to do with it. So anyways, what we were trying to say. Is that um that let's see the book of Numbers chapter twenty four shall there shall come a star out of Jacob and a scepter shall rise out of Israel and shall smite the corners of Moab and destroy all the children of Shet. You see, 
a star out of Jacob, out of Yaakov. Let's see, let's see. A star out of Yaakov. What is a star? A star, Kokeb, Kokeb, you know, we could interpret it as, as circular, as a revolution. A revolution shall come from Yaakov, a change, a perfection. He shall become spiritual, he shall become rounded, and he shall give light, because he is a prince. Is it, a, is it not a light thing that you must be to the Gentiles? You should be a light to the Gentiles. So Jesus Christos was a light to the Ethiopians that in turn are a light to us, because the light shined in darkness. The darkness is not the color of, of our brother's skin. The, the darkness is the fact that it was a concealed work, it was a mystery, it was a dark scene, it was a parable. It was kept from the from the evils of the world as a living testimony to remind I and I so that in turn we could we could receive, we could be zealous for that which was given to them, that we may seek to, to receive it, to take it for ourselves. So Ethiopia, the children of his majesty according to the flesh, I and I as Rastafari according to the promise. That's that. Now, a star shall come out of Jacob. Jacob shall be perfected, shall be made round, because he's not sharp. He doesn't have corners. He doesn't. So, in this case, we, we break Torah because we cut the corners of ourselves. But, you know, Jah ja has always been sarcastic to prove the, 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 what's it called, the wisdom of man as stupidity. And man's and Jah wisdom above all things, and he will do that if you notice. I mean, every every law of Torah he himself breaks, but he justifies it in a way to outsmart you because less you think highly of yourself, you know. And um, I I know people probably thinking like that's crazy, but no, it's not, you know. So you just gotta really know Torah to be like, okay, let's say let's let's put it to you this way. We'll use one example. What did David do? Did David not? murder did he not intentionally plan the murder of his faithful mighty warrior so faithful to the point that he that to try to cover up his his hideous atrocities atrocity mistake or crime against humanity according to torah by laying with his woman and taking co coveting the one thing that this poor man had david having everything so breaking all kinds of torah rules now the when he even tried to clean it up and say what what should i do okay i'm gonna call him up and have him you know have him sleep with his wife and maybe people won't notice that it's my child so when he tried to do that he you know he sees he sees um his his um his faithful warrior and not just any faith of you know a name a named one he sees him like um I think in the, like in his palace steps or something like that or somewhere but not in his in his um house and he's all like what are you doing here you didn't go sleep with your wife he's all like how could I I'm supposed to be faithful to you I'm supposed to be fighting a war so you know David's got no choice well he could just confess and make everything better but no he, he still wants to abide in, in in concealment he doesn't want to confess the truth he doesn't want to make known his mistake his error, his sin. So what he, what does he do? He, he, he sends so that he gets killed, and you know, perhaps maybe thinking because I didn't do it physically. I mean, physically, um, you know, perhaps it, it can't be applied on me. So what, what am I trying to get to? The fact that David did a very wicked job, a very wicked work. Now, how do we justify this? Well, let's use Torah. Let's use the Bible for something good. Okay, let's not, let's not um, apply sin upon I and I brethren. Let's rebuke his sin. But let us not, um, uh, in any wise, uh, you know, like, um, you know, what does it say? I got to go to that verse. I mean, can't even remember. Suffer sin upon him. All right, there we go. You know, we shall in every, any wise rebuke I not wind him, but we shall not suffer sin upon him. But no doubt he committed sin. But let's use Torah for life. Let's, let's, if we in Christ, right, we should be able to do that instead of just accusing the brethren. And um, finding ways of death, that's not Torah, you know, because if the, the Hamashiach ben Yosef, the son of Joseph, according to the law, um, if, if, you know, the son of the living God, according to the spirit, Jesus Christos, our black Lord and Savior, Yeshua Hamashiach, if he fulfilled Torah and he never once stoned anyone, he never once condemned anyone, he never once, he never once accused anyone, he never once brought any kind of suffering through the law to anyone, then the law being fulfilled, it doesn't have anything to 
do with death, then we should be able to recognize that it all is worth for life, or it, it is all there for us to bring life out of Torah. But you can't do this unless we in Christ in truth. So how do we do that? Okay, let's use Torah. This is what we're going to do. We're going to say that, no, 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 David did not commit a sin. Actually, actually, he took up the responsibility of raising seed to the name of his brother that died faithfully in battle. That sounds better. That way we don't we don't halal Hashem Janim, which is redundant. I shouldn't have said that, but we don't profane the name of uh, it, uh, the we don't profane the name or the named, which is one and the same because we is one. You see, so now we could utilize Torah and give lies. Hey, David, no, 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 David didn't come in a sin. What he did, he was an honorable man. David raised seed to his brother that died faithfully in battle. See how that changes things? Jah will do that. So, you know, ones that think that maybe, oh, what did, what did he say? What do you mean that Jah uses sarcasm to the extent that he'll he'll break every law in Torah? Yeah, he does. Why? Well, check this out. The Gospel of uh, the Gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter 1, verse number 6. And Jesse begot David the king, David the king, and David the king begot Solomon. Of her that had been the wife of Urias. Urias. Why would it say that? Because he raised up seed to his wendom to cover up for sin using Torah. There you go. If one still can't receive that, then, you know, uh, there's nothing we could really do about that. Anyways, going forward. So, scepter shall rise up out of, out of Israel. Well, once you become, you found favor with heaven on earth. And with man on earth, then you become the rod. You become the scepter through which the will of heaven is done on earth. You become the connector. You become the missing link, not Lucy. But we become the light, not Lucy. We become the missing link. This is the connection that's, that, 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 bring, that reconciles man to the first power of the Trinity. His being, his state of being prior to his fall. But first, Jacob must become perfected why do we say this do you know that a circle is the same as a square both are what can we say both are 360 in perimeter that's to say you know like uh you know a square let's see 90 90 90 and um i don't even know if that's accurate i mean yeah it's a square because it's got to be um right angles so you have Let's see, let's see. Am I even getting that right? 9 times 4, 36. Am I right? Am I right? I never, never was good at math. Um, I think that's right. I may be right. But 360. So 90 times 4, 360. Oh, uh, we know a cipher or a, or a circle is 360 degrees. So now, this is what it is. Moab. Why smite the corners of Moab? Because Moab is the work of Abram. So it's our problem. We are the problem. Abram brought along Lot, which he decided to do so because he did not obey the commandment and will of Jah by saying, circumcise thyself from the flesh. He thought maybe, oh, oh, but he probably doesn't mean Lot. Why? Because our interpretation of his commandment is always wrong since the beginning. Oh, no, it doesn't mean that, that, you, that we can't eat from that tree. He probably meant something else. So let's go eat from the tree. No, 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 he probably didn't mean that I have to leave La. Maybe he just meant, um, oh, but what about your father? You didn't leave him either. Oh, yeah, what do I say about that? Well, um, well, maybe he, he, that's not what John meant. He said, no, we know what he meant. It's, but we know what we are also. We're, we're disobedient. So let that be, be that. Actually, you know, what's, what's interesting about, about the, the circle, because Kokeb can mean, um, a prince or a circle. And a prince leads to a circle, a well, a, a, a well-rounded individual, a perfected man, you know, no corners, no sharpness, because our wisdom is pure. So now, there's some sayings actually, uh, in um, in Spanish, which I thought were interesting. Um, un hombre redondo, a circular man. That's it, it you know, well-rounded, coquette. Lleno de esquinas peligrosas. That's to say, 
filled with with um dangerous corners but well rounded but harmless as a dove wise as a serpent because they're well folded because he's been humbled because he's covered his face you know because he's he's his wings are his covering so he doesn't utilize them for wrong to inflict pain or to inflict damage upon others you know so the folding of the wings is to cover as contrary to, to the use of the corners to smite you know just found that interesting now um might as well you know we into this watch i'll, I'll give one as an example let's see what should we do should we bring that down Let's see, uh, well, might as well. This is a painting of the book of, of chapter four of the book of, um, Revelation. Let's see if we could get this. Actually, this, this is gonna, man, this is, I should not be talking about any of this. I need to do some other teachings. I was supposed to stick to the program. All right, check this out. This right here. This is chapter four of the book of Revelation. I know I don't look that clear, whatever. But um, this is the perfection of man. See, these these saints back here have to be 24. Four, four, four. 12 apostles, 12 um, tribes. The throne is in the midst of the being that is perfect. And in the midst of him that sit upon the throne is the Christ that has been slain. don't want to receive this it's best just to get out of the way and stop playing around because this is not a joke I'm going to cut it off. But we, we're not. It's not fair.
fact that you have distorted every Like you, you go into a place and you destroy a people. Good. So, what? What are you gonna do? How are you gonna? 